let's take a look at the surface area of a cone. Now the best way to do that I think is to break it up into its net and understand how you get the formula. So uh, you can see at the bottom of this cone you have a circle. Okay, so that's going to be pi r squared. That bit. Now here we have well it's uh, you can see if we if you cut a part of a larger circle out and when you bring it together that makes the, um, the side of the the cone now so we're going to have a larger radius there but it's not a full circle it's at some fraction of a circle and if we were to have a full circle um, well it would be pi L, let's call L the, um, the slanty height, so that would be the radius of that, but it's not a full circle, so it's some fraction of that. Okay. Uh, what fraction is that? Well, uh, it's, well, you can see this part of the larger circle meets up with the circumference of the smaller circle. So it's that proportion of the the distance around here as compared to the distance around a um, around the larger circle the circumference. So what's the circumference of a larger circle? Um, you would have uh, well two pi L in this case and the circumference of the smaller circle is 2 pi um, r so in the end you would get 2 pi r which represents this part okay over as a proportion to 2 pi l times the area of the full larger circle. Okay, now some something. Uh, well, let's scrub that out and just times L. Okay, you start to cancel here, and you can cancel one of the L's here with that, which leaves us pi r L as the formula for this. Uh, larger sector. So all up you could then write it as the surface area of a cone is equal to the circular base plus pi r l the side sector. Right, well let's um, go and give us some dimensions here and we'll see what type of problems uh, we might have now that's all very well and good if they give you the slanty height but they don't always give you the slanty height they might just give you the perpendicular height so let's work on that harder problem of having a perpendicular height so let's put in some dimensions we'll say that the radius here could be a six units and this height I uh, will say is 8 units. Now, how do we find the slanty height? Well, I've drawn this little right angle triangle coming down through the center and it L here would form a the hypotenuse of this smaller uh, right angle triangle. So it just becomes a Pythagoras problem. Okay, you can draw your triangle out. Uh, we'll say L is that slanty height. R in this case was the radius 6 and the height, perpendicular height, was given to us as 8. So we know that C uh, is the hypotenuse most of the time. B so that gives us our typical Pythagoras formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And we can go ahead and substitute this in. 
so 8 squared plus 6 squared, 64 plus 36, and we end up with C equal to 10. So this slanty height now is 10, which is just what we need to solve our problem. Okay, so we can write down what we know. Slanted height equals 10, R equals 6, and that's all we need. times 10 36 pi plus 60 pi equals 96 pi remember that's our exact answer let's go and write this down to one decimal place uh, now before you do remember what do you expect is your answer uh, it's close to 100 okay we round up round down to 3 so this answer is going to be pretty close to 300 100 times 3 uh, therefore equals let's type that in to your calculator and you get Approximately 301.5928, etc. Okay, and this is unit squared, so we're going to round this now to one decimal place, so 301.6 is a 9, rounds that 5 up to a 6. Unit squared to one decimal place. Now, there are other ways to remember the formula. I like having it this way because uh, it means I think you understand how it's constructed. If you you might see um, an alternative formula equal to this.